Hey everybody, it's Brad from Ellicott City Sovac. I'm here with Brian Bailey, creator of Designers Gallery Software, uh, and we're just going to show you the new program that's coming out. Hi everyone, we've got uh, three new levels of digitizing for you coming up with Designers Gallery. We don't have a name, but we're thinking it's <laughs> going to be called Creator, and you'll have three levels of digitizing that will take you from very simple applique all the way up through advanced path operations and vector graphics. So I think we can do a couple minute little tour of each level. Yeah, let's take a look. And uh, follow along. Okay, what we have here is level one. And level one has quite a bit in it for a digitizing program that will be out there under $200, give or, give or take. For instance, we can bring in images. Now, some of these are older Masterworks images. You might recognize some of them, but they'll serve our purpose today. So. So you can bring in any JPEG, JPEG image, and it'll just it'll just bring it right in the program. Absolutely, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, bitmap, all those sorts of things. Now, what we've got here is a little bit different than what you may have seen in other platforms. When we're in the digitizing mode, all of our tools are right here, and we don't need a separate mode to draw or reshape designs or anything else. So. Right now I've got this image, and one of the easy ways to find a shape is just to use a magic wand. And in this case, we can magic wand multiple elements, and I'm going to right click to turn that off. If we look at our objects view, you'll see there's the background picture, and then those three objects we just made. Now that we have them drawn, let's go ahead and set a stitch on it. So the stitch section shows what we're capable of creating right now. So you've basically got two sections there. One of them is for drawing shapes in, and the other one actually ap applies stitch properties to, Ab to a shape. Absolutely. It's a lot easier doing it this way than running back and forth on a ribbon bar, you know, or having a drop-down list of stitch types. Sure, add. sure. Now, Brian, I, I noticed that the, the colors are the colors from the image that the stitches are now. Yeah, it looks, when the magic wand operates, it looks for uh, the color and the outline, and so it picks that up for you naturally. Now, we also have some fun because an object, once it's set as a stitch type, it doesn't have to stay that way for its life. For instance, if I copy and paste this object, you'll see I have two fills going on there now, but what I might want to do with this is add a running stitch to it. And so now we'd have a run that surrounds that fill. It's an automatic outline, pretty much. It, it is. With our runs, we have seven different flavors, including some that are fairly unique, like Sashiko. Uh, Sashiko Stitch, if you remember from our interactives a few years ago, was very popular. And so now we can use that to digitize with. Here I'm going to change the color so that people at home can have it highlighted and see what's going on. Wow, that's really cool. Now suppose, just while we have a shape here, that we wanted this to not be filled embroidery. Have you ever done freestanding lace? Sure, yeah. It's, it's, kind, of, it's, it's kind of tedious, right? Yeah, it is. So what I decided to do was to give you the freestanding fill as an option. And that just works? like That's it. It's ready to sew on wash away stabilizer. I, I remember when, when, uh, when Masterworks came out and they had the lace motif fills and everybody thought they were going to be able to make freestanding lace like that. It's right. just... That's not how it works. No, not at all. But you remember uh, my interactives. Yeah. And this uses the same stitch that we used in Dining and Lace and Christmas Traditions. Oh, um, yeah, those are beautiful designs. And we also have a, a, another stitch for that, too, which would be a satin stitch border that we can apply. And obviously that's a thick one, so let's shrink that down, make it something more rational. <laughs> but one of the things we can do with satin stitches in all levels of the program is add a freestanding underlay to it. No, oh, so that traps the, the, the freestanding stitches and keeps it so that everything right. stays together. It's a little bit more stitch intensive because you're essentially weaving a piece of fabric right where the stitches are going to land. Wow. So it does all that for you, and it's quite Well, easy. normally you'd have to do that manually. If you wanted, yes. if you wanted to make freestanding lace in Masterworks or Floriani or, or whatever, right. you you're, you're to... doing that stitch by stitch yourself. That's so right. They don't have a feature for that. Right. No, nobody else seems to... Care. So, so I do it. Now, I've watched some video tutorials on how to make like freestanding lace. I'm like, I'm, you know what? I'm not doing videos on that. Forget it. You know what's kind of fun is, uh, you know, John Deere from Adorable yeah, Ideas. Sure. He's, a, he's a friend of mine, and we go back a lot of years, and he visited my house one time, and we were sitting on my porch, and uh, he said, you know, those lace files that were done by my grandfather, and, you know, two tutors going back, you know, decades. Right. And uh, he said, I, I brought them in and had them converted from the original Shifley into 
stitch files that he now sells. Right. And I, I asked him, I said, can we bring some up and compare what I had to teach myself yeah. out of the raw blue, right? <laughs> right? And we laid them up, two designs on the same page, and son of a gun, the technique that I had to invent like 50 years later because nobody would teach me, <laughs> they, were, they were really this close. It was pretty oh, funny. Man. That's cool. So, yeah. So we have that. Another thing, I know you guys have a good quilting market. Yeah. And so what I'd like to do here, I'm just going to wand this uh, vase shape in. And I want to show you what we're doing with stippling. Yeah. Now, mind you, this is all still in level one. We haven't touched level two or level three. Wow. But so here we have a stippling. And our stippling is not really one size fits all. We have different varieties to stipple with. So some floral looking things, even a geometric stipple. Now, I'm noticing that as you're doing this, it changes immediately. Right. I don't believe in the apply button. <laughs> Me neither. I, I want so instant annoying. gratification. <laughs> yeah. That's so, cool. Now, any time you have an automated tool like this, sometimes you may have a, a set of stitches or stitch points that aren't exactly where you want them. Right, sure. But you've always sort of had to live with it because that's the tool. Yeah, it Either generates it and that's what it or, is. Or, you know, you or draw do it, it by yourself. Hand. Right. Exactly. So what I'm going to do here, just because I know what I'm what I want to show you. I'm going to increase the spacing so it doesn't have to be a tight stipple. It can be a loose meander. Uh -huh. But in this case, if I change that stipple over to a run, what I get is a run stitch object that I can now apply stitches to. So if I want that to be a stem stitch or maybe I want it to be a motif run and I'm going to go add some motifs to it. So wow. now you have a lot more flexibility coming from a stippling concept. That's really cool. And I notice also that you have nodes on that. As, as soon as you turn that into a run, you actually get nodes. You can move the points around for that. Absolutely. So let me just take it back to an ordinary run here like we had. So if I want to adjust the shapes on this, I can bring those in. Or I can even just go around them and delete some. And that way you have, you have the ability to edit the, the path uh, that the automated program has created the, the stippling. That's, That's exactly right. Wow. Now, while we're editing, this is a good time to talk about something I think a lot of people are going to find very helpful. You know, some of our customers are graphic artists. They're familiar with Bezier. Sure. And then there's the rest of them that don't know, don't want to know. And honestly, <laughs> yeah. we understand. Right. Totally. So here's what we have here for those folks is a button that turns off the bezier handles and what happens is as you move this they automate but they're behind the scenes so it's it's still doing it it's still using it's bezier still there, curves. But your customer doesn't have to worry about it wow now if there's a case where you need to you know make a different curve but this point has to stay and this point has to say stay oops simply double click and you've added a point. So instead of right-clicking and choosing add point, it just does that. Just double-click. What if I want to get rid of a point? Is there a fast way to... double-click on a point, and <sighs> it goes away. That is so much easier. Now, something that I think you're going to appreciate, when there are no nodes selected, in other words, we're not editing the outline, yeah. we actually have full sizing controls. You can grab the handle in the middle and move it around. So we're not bouncing back to a selection mode and then coming to a reform mode. Right. So basically the, the, the select tool and the reform tool is like it's, it's all one thing. You're it's, selecting and using reform or shape or whatever you want to call it. Right. Believe me, I spent a lot of time getting rid of those extra buttons and, no, and, and modes within the program. This is creativity unleashed. Also, you see how we change properties so quickly and easily. But another thing that really always bothered me before is suppose I had two objects of a similar type. Or maybe yeah. I had a bunch of objects, and I want to just adjust one property because, like, oh, I'm a bonehead. I meant to put all those things as a bean stitch. Right. Instead of having to go back to select one thing at a time, here I've got lace, fill, satin border run. I have all those selected, and I have all their properties available for every object that's selected. So I can actually just change the properties for everything that has a run? That's right. And... If I have multiple what? properties, let's say I just want to apply a tie stitch to them. And that'll go to everything. That'll go to everything, but only that property. So in other words, if one was set as a run, and one was set as a bean stitch, and one's a chain, we're not affecting globally every property on everything, just the one thing that you want to change on all those objects. And this is the changed. basic program? We're still under 200 bucks typically. Oh my god. Yeah. So. 
Now let's take it up a notch, okay? Because level one is fantastic for adding stitches, drawing stitches, applique. Honestly, this is a big part of this would be applique. Um, but level two, you'll probably find logo designers, people who actually want to take your, okay. your six and ten needle machines yep. and do something cottage industry with yeah, them. Yeah, I got a lot of people trying to digitize their son's logo or whatever. Absolutely, I know, and I've seen you teach it. So we have a creator edition here that's got multiple levels in it to make it easier for us to, to display what we're doing. So this would be level two. And level two has all those tools, maybe a few more, but the principal thing that a professional digitizer will notice right away is our satin column input tools. Right, Because right. when you're doing corporate logos and things like that, it's all about the satin columns. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they, they reflect the light better. It looks more professional. Absolutely. So, and here we have full inclination control. So let me start with a very typical uh, input method, which is our left-right input. Manual so, punch. Well, kind of, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this, uh, this goes back a long ways, but here we're going to make a nice little satin column. And it, yep. as we do it, we have our inclines. Mm -hmm. Another way that's more prevalent in commercial software is using a two-sided input. So what I'm going to do is make ourselves a shape on one side. It's going to be, you know, particularly difficult to satin stitch. Okay. Now I'm going to right-click and I'm done with that side, and now I'm just going to make the opposite side. So wait, you're doing two sides of a satin stitch? Absolutely. So sometimes the art, it's easier to follow along one path, and then you're, well, sure. you know, you're panned away from where you began, so then you want to start clicking back in the other direction on the other side. Right. So that's what happens here. So now I've got side one, I right clicked, which told the program I was switching to side two, I'm going to right click again. It so closed the shape for you. It closed the shape for me and it's also turned on my inclination modes. Oh. So there I can add my inclines as I like and then I right click and we have satin stitch. Wow. Now for certain projects this is the only way to enter a set of points. It's just so easy. Yeah, that's really easy. Of course we can take, and I'll just do this real quickly, I can just draw any kind of a shape I'm going to do, use a control key here to come back. I'm going to control right click to close it. So that's just a shape. Right. If I want that to be a satin, I can, I can turn that into a satin by adding some inclination lines and tell it it's a satin stitch. So that's like your auto satin, basically. Well, auto satin is in here. If we wanted to, let me start a new page for our viewers. We'll put uh, a true type on. Oh, this reads true type fonts too? Yeah, we use true type as art. Does the basic do that too? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So if we want to use true type as art, you know, you can apply any of any of the stitches to it. It's really uh, and your version here is not is not current, but we'll get you the current one. Actually, I know it's on that stick right there, but um, this is a complete engine for commercial digitizing. Mm -hmm. Now. There's a lot more in level two where we've got sequencing tricks, we've got uh, a continuous view. I know you guys do a lot with the continuous hoop. Yeah. You and see what that's going to look like. Mm hmm Absolutely. I also see there's a vector button. What's that do? Ah, the vector button is really handy. I'm sure a lot of your customers by now are using the vinyl cutters. Oh, yeah. You know, silhouette, yeah, scan similar. and cut, yep. blah, 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 whatever. Sizzix now has a really nice one, yeah, I see. Yeah, I saw it. Okay, so if we go to vector... We can bring in vector files in SVG, which is the new That's graphic like the standard, standard, basically. And what's nice about that is we don't have to go and try and chase Adobe Illustrator for all their file versions anymore, right, right, or right. Corel Draw. Yeah, it's a nightmare um, trying to import an AI file sometimes. Yeah, it's very difficult. We actually do import AIs in level three, yeah. but oh. not all of them because some sure. of the recent versions Absolutely. are very difficult. Absolutely, they change it. But all of those programs today... We'll save as an SVG. Right. Isn't right. that wonderful? I know. It's so awesome. Now, I know some of your customers may have cutters like Scan and Cut or Silhouette. Sure. And so we actually import and export both of those formats. So if you want to design something on the PC for the Silhouette or the Scan and Cut, you can digitize it here, go cut the vinyl, and then add your stitches... So you've got a mixed media or multimedia process. That's outrageous. Or like we do with applique. So, yes, it's, it's pretty neat. So we did add vector support there mostly for the cutters and to coordinate with the applique stitches. Uh -huh. So 
let's take a look at a simple applique. What would that look like? So okay. I'm just going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to draw a shape. I'm going to bring in one of the shapes because we haven't talked about that. Oh, the program comes with some shapes? It comes with hundreds of outline sets, yes. So we can go in and, uh, I don't know, let's grab a teardrop or, you know, something that suits your fancy, doesn't matter. That's Main a lot stars. of stars. There's, yeah, all the variations, right? Those are nice. <laughs> yeah, we came in with... Uh, it's 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 like it's a, like custom shapes, but there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of them. Yeah, like a lot of times you get custom shapes in a program, and there's like you know thirty. I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, so let's pick the the most boring shape at all, one with no corners. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but you you can do this literally with any shape in the library or anything that they draw or anything that they import. Because once we have art on the page, it's just art on the page. We don't differentiate based on how it comes in. Okay. So the library has designs that are already digitized for us. So let's go and, whoops, I have to select it. And now we're going to do applique on that. And, oh, I'm, st I'm still was telling it I was drawing. I forgot to turn off the yep, button. Yep. That's right. So now we're on applique. And so there's your basic satin stitch out applique. Now this gives you a position. It gives you a material. Yeah, the, the two different running stitches that, that they do. Right. Don't, don't do those manually. This will do it all for you. Yeah. And you can adjust the insets, which inflates or deflates the, the run stitch so that your material run might be slightly inset. Right. You know, if you're going to cut it by hand. Mm -hmm. Although I think it's a lot easier to simply uh, yeah, if you're gonna send do it out to a cutter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Today we have. But this you know, feature. some people some people do still cut with applique scissors, uh, little duckbill scissors. You know, if it's something simple, I'd probably whack it. But today we're getting into really intricate shapes. Yeah. You know, and the the little kitty cat and the the owl and all those sorts of things. No. Sure. So here's what we have in your regular color picker. There's an applique tab now, so we can tell the program that that color is an applique position or material. And we can also put a fabric simulation. Oh, look at that. If they change the color, they can change the color of the fabric. Oh, nice. So, so instead of, I mean, because it would be pointless, really, to change the color of the applique stitch. You're doing that, and you're actually able to, to preview what it's going to look like. Absolutely. So your kitty cat can be the right color. And when we, when we get back to what these colors will actually represent, you know, a lot of your customers have multi-needle machines. Yeah. And they don't want to dedicate a thread to an applique position. They yeah. just use the color. They want to use the same color that the top stitch is going to be. Yeah. They just want the machine to stop. Right. So yeah, can, this, right. Exactly. So we actually do have that feature built in where they can, right now it's using the PES colors, but you have a drop box that lets you select, keep color, and it's for multi-needle machines. Nice. So here we have uh, an applique. We also have the ability to bring in a picture. And I'm just going to say OK here for now. And so you can adjust that picture behind your applique, and it will crop it for you. Oh, you can, so like with like if you're using printable fabric? Exactly, or transfer paper. Yeah. Yeah, you can even print it mirrored. So that way you've got a, a mixed media application of pho photography and embroidery. Wow. And the combination of that really looks stellar. And by the way, that's in level one. We just happen to be talking about it level <laughs> two. <laughs> so uh, some people really love uh, eyelets and candle wicks and things like that. Yeah. It's just another tool that's in level two where we can make, you know, French knots, candle wicks. Really? Do all those heirloom type, you know, additions to a composition. Nice. Now, a lot of your customers are going to say, yeah, but I want to do the vector stuff. I'm a graphic artist. What can you show me that's, that I've never yeah. seen before? Right, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I get, I get people like that emailing me. <laughs> I'm sure, right? So this is going to be level three. And level three does add uh, a fair number of things. But the, the most significant pieces, I would think, is the vector operations on paths. Now, it sounds like a, you know, a difficult-to-learn concept, but yeah. it's really not. Right. And once you understand what the basics of these things do, boy, you can have fun. Let me show you one little thing that I like to do because okay. it's, um, it's so easy and it explains a lot. So we have a, a, a vector operation that will surround stitches. Okay. It'll actually look for so any stitches. So this is an embroidery design that we're working any on Any embroidery here. design, even lettering, it doesn't matter what. Okay. Okay. And actually what I want to do with this, I'm going to make it something more complicated because that really shows off um, the process. Okay. And 
Just a quick tip, a shift drag will zoom in, will scale it up in place. So now we have a fairly complex stitch shape as an outline, and if we open up our digitizing mode, this button here has a lot of potential. Create an outline from stitches on the page. So if we click this, we've now generated three new objects. So that just, that just created outlines from uh -huh. the stitches? Yes. And that works with any kind of stitches? With any kind of stitches. So now what? that we've outlined it, we can take this font that we have here, and I'm going to change the color because it's going to be more obvious to our viewers uh, through the YouTube, and we're going to apply a stitch. Oh my god. <laughs> pretty simple, pretty easy. Yeah, that's unreal. Now, let's take this a step further for the real vector pros. Okay. okay. And actually, anybody can do this. It's not hard to learn, but it's something to be aware of because, like, wow, how cool is this? We're going to take this, and we're going to copy and paste. So now I have that set of outlines separately. I'm going to make them back to artwork. I'm going to make them lines okay. so that we can work with it. And now I'm going to inflate those shapes. I'm going to make them bigger. You see how they surround yeah. my art now? So I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to delete the holes off of that because I just want to create an echo the, out, the outer around part. it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm left with these shapes that do interlock. Yeah, they're like overlapping. Right. A vector person will know that you can union those shapes. Uh -huh. And the union just takes all the outsides and combines it together. So now I can get rid of those three, because I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use the union. Oh, man. I'm going to delete the hole from it, because I don't want the hole. And now I'm going to apply a stitch. That would be so hard to do manually and have it look like that. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. Because, like, you know, you try and, you try and do that, but following the actual contours of the, the outer part of your letters would be really, really difficult. Well, believe me, it was really difficult to write the program. <laughs> so let's take this one last step further, and I think we'll have a good explanation of level three in hand. Okay. You have quilters in your community. Absolutely, yeah. So let's take this to a ordinary run. Sure. And now we're going to echo quilt it. Really? Yes, we are. We're going to take that object and we're going to use our contour area. And we have different ways. We can come in or we can echo out. Whoa. So let's set our, our gap up a little bit. So, you know, about a quarter of an inch, right? About six millimeters. And how many steps do you want? Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that's really awesome. And 30 seconds of quick demoing. Now, obviously, I know what the tools are. But these tools are not out of the normal use of range of a Corel Draw or or an Adobe Illustrator user or yeah, so anybody Inks, that's Inks. anybody that's used to using you know graphical mm -hmm. editing programs at all is going to be very comfortable with this. I think so. Yeah, and I think so too. When you can see this result, it takes it's worth taking the time to learn about them. Yeah. The nice part is, we've we've taken the difficulty of the user interface and gotten rid of that. So now it's easy to use, and the more you learn about what you've got. You're just produ productive. You're yeah. making things. Well, it's as nice you go. that all the buttons are in one place too. It's not like you've got to go into a bunch of menus and stuff. Right. <laughs> and you're everything. not bouncing around. Yeah. Uh, one last thing that's really kind of neat about the uh, level three is the use of styles and style sheets. Okay. So, for instance, if you do this same work a lot, you can add a quick style, and so you can put your own name on that. And so now we have a style of a stitch. Okay. All the properties are set and saved. So if we come back to another uh, design page today or in the future, we can draw something very quickly, however you would do it. I'm just going to make a few points on a closed shape here. And click on that and then use your style. And so it's just going to remember, it's as if... I've saved the properties of what I was doing, That's and I can just load the, the same properties. Absolutely. Not only that, but you can take a whole suite of objects and have a whole number of properties for each object, and you do have that available as a style sheet. So you can save a working file that has all the way you like to operate on, say, a PK knit shirt, or your quilt projects, or however you want it to be. But all you, it's like building your own recipe, except the difference is they're accessible anytime you want them. Not just when you start a page, 
any time during construction. So you can apply it. You, you can be drawing stuff and then decide, you know what, I'm going to apply this style to it. Absolutely. In wow. fact, you can have styles from different style sheets available. You tell yourself what you want to have. And so in your style drop list, you'll have them all show up here. Wow. It's almost like you've been using embroidery digitizing software for a really long time and figured out all the stuff that was really annoying about well, it. Well, let's just say I, I go back to 92 with it, and uh, this program has about 10 years worth of work in it. Well, it's an incredible program. Thank you for coming and uh, sitting with me and telling me a little bit about it. Um, oh, you're welcome. Uh, Hope everyone at home had fun. <laughs> right. We'll see you soon.